So today we'll be learning about the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So just to review, the first fundamental theorem of calculus, which I'll be calling FTC for short, states that if f is continuous on the closed interval a through b and f big F is the indefinite integral of little f on a to b, then the integral from a to b of little f of x dx equals big F of b minus big F of a. Now, if you're a calculus student, you probably heard this many times already. But what you may not have heard a lot of is the second fundamental theorem of calculus. So FTC2 states that for for f on a continuous function and on an open interval i, and a, any point in i, and states that if big F is defined by big F of x equals the inter, inter, integral from a to x, little f of t dt, then f prime of x equals little f of x at each point in i. So what this is basically saying is the derivative of this is just going to be the original function because the derivative and the integral will cancel each other out. So it'll just make the little f of x. So if you want to see a proof, we can use the original we can use the original FTC1 to prove it. So if we plug it in our interval x and a, we will eventually get f of x minus f of a, and this is just going to equal the original equation, or little f of t, because the the integral the integral and the derivative are inverses and they will cancel each other out. So basically, there are three different types of problems which the FTC2 would be applicable. So here's what I call a type 1 problem. And this problem is the most common problem for FTC2. It's the one you'll be seeing the most of. It's when you have, well, you have to pay, for every FTC problem, you have to pay very special attention to whatever your interval is. Because it only works when you have an upper bound as an x and a lower bound as a constant. So, for this type of one problem, for my example, I'll be showing you, say that we have f, we have, sorry, we have 5 and x cubed. Now you might be thinking, well the x isn't on the upper bound, so we can't use it, right? Well, remember that integrals have a special property. So let's say that the integral is sine t dt. So integrals have a special property, right? So we can make this equal to this, this the opposite, as long as we have a negative out front. So these two are equal. So if the x is on the lower one and the constant is on the upper, just flip them, but remember to add your, add your negative. This is a common mistake, is forgetting the negative when you flip them. So if we were to solve this, all you have to do since, oh wait, we're taking the derivative here. So if you forgot. And then, so all you have to do to solve this is these two, are going to cancel each other out, basically. So you just take the original function, which is this, and plug in your x. So, remember, we switched this now, so it's negative, and the x cubed is up here in the 5. So, remember your negative, and plug it into the original. Sine of x cubed. See? And then, don't forget the chain rule, though. Whatever this is, you have to take the derivative derivative of it and then multiply it to this. So in this case it would be 3x squared. If this is just x don't worry about it because the derivative is 1 so it won't matter. But if it's not don't forget the chain rule and you have to multiply it by the derivative of the upper bound if it, if it is an x. Okay so that's that's a type 1. That's the one you usually see most of. Things like that. Type 2 is a little more complicated. So type 2, can you see this okay? Um, is when you have two x's on your integrals. So say you have x cubed and x. So now you're like, both of these are x's, what should I do? Well, let's use the same t problem as before. So you're like, okay, what do we do? Well, don't forget about your first FTC, which is really important. Big F of B minus big F of A. So, 
basically you're going to do kind of the same thing as you have been doing. So plug in, first plug in the upper one, sine of x cubed. Don't forget chain rule, so multiply by the derivative. Same answer as before, right? Well now subtract the lower one, and you got to plug in the lower one. In this case it's just sine of x. Now because it's an x, the derivative is 1, and we don't need to worry about that. You can show a 1 if you want, it doesn't matter. But um, So this is going to be your answer. This is not needed. So then you could just leave it like that. And there you go. That's your answer. So for whenever there's two x's over here, just remember your original fundamental theorem of calculus. You could also use, you could also um, make it so that it would be uh, the original problem. You could also make it so it goes from zero and then add them, but that's a bit more complicated and I don't really like this method, so. This is another way to do it, but it's not as easy, so. So that's a type 2 problem. Now, for the type 3 problem, is not really a problem you use the FTC to. It's just, it's a bit of a trick, tricky problem. So this is a very common mistake to make, is if um, you are taking the derivative of an integral, and you see this, and you think, oh good, I can use the second FTC. But then you look at the integral, and you see you have constants. So now you look, and you're like, what do I do? So say your function looks something like this. That's a t squared over natural log of t over t squared dt. So now that looks pretty complicated, right? And you're like, so there's two constants over here. This is going to equal zero, I can tell you right now. Why is this? Because, well, you don't use the FTC because there is no x over here. These are both constants. And what happens when you take the derivative of a constant? You get zero. So don't forget about FTC1. Because it's going to be, you're going to have f of b, which is just going to be a number, minus f of a, which is just going to be a number, and then a number minus a number is a number. The derivative of a number will always be zero, as long as there's no x involved. And since there's no x involved here, it's just zero. So if your calculus teacher is trying to trick you, he might have one of these on the test. And just remember, two constants, derivative, integral, zero. So you don't fall for the same mistake that I did. Anyway, so that's a type 3. I call that my type 3 problem. Alright, so now that we've gone through all three types, you might be thinking you've pretty much got the hang of this. Well, before I go, I have one last mega problem that I created to test your understanding of the FTC2. Alright, so our mega problem looks like this. This is f of x. Or actually, you know what? We're going to find the derivative. So d over dx. This is going to be really fun. Look at these. Yeah, this is going to be super fun. Um, okay, so cosine t. Mm, cosine of t minus 10 t squared plus 7. So we're finding the derivative here. That's a t squared, and that is a 7. Sorry, my lefty skills. Um, okay. So, wow, that is complicated. Um, so the first thing, you, you can pause this video now if you want and, like, work it out, but I'm going to show you the answer. So the way I would do this is, I would set this upper bound equal to u. So, u equals 2x cubed plus 5x plus 9. Derivative of u, 6x squared plus 5. And then I would set the lower one. Let me move this up a little bit. Sorry, can you guys see? Okay. I would set the lower one equal to n. So let me grab a different color. This would be n. So n equals ln x squared. Derivative of n is just going to be um, x squared over 
Sorry, that was backwards. The derivative of this is going to be 2x over x squared, which is just, if you want to simplify it even more, 2 over x dx. Alright, so you have this. Now, what you want to do is plug all this in. So remember, using the first FTC, you want your upper minus your lower. Okay, so u minus n. So you plug in all the u's, so I'm going to switch back to red here. It's going to be long, bear with me. If I don't mess up. 2x cubed plus 5x plus 9 minus 10. So really the hardest part of all this is um, not messing up your algebra because there's a lot going on here and one misstep could give you the wrong answer. And so let me not forget anything. So don't forget, oh yeah, the chain rule. So we're going to have to multiply this by u primed. And what is the derivative of u? Well, I have it over here, all nice and handy. So it's going to be 6 x squared plus 5. I am running out of room. Okay. And then we're going to subtract this from n. We plug in n now. And n is ln x squared. So, cosine of ln x squared minus 10 over ln x squared squared plus 7. Now also, chain rule, chain rule, what is the derivative? It is 2 over x, so don't forget to multiply that. And there you go. That This whole thing is going to be your answer. And you can definitely simplify it further, but, but um, that's algebra. That's simply algebra, so I'm here to teach you calculus. And that is it for the FTC2. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something and enjoyed. Thanks, bye.